everybody today we back with another reaction video the name of the video is rappers that ran from cops it's got spot em got em fulio lil uzi vert chef b chef g nba d dog and lil tim before we get started y'all like comment subscribe and um Ring that notification bell if y'all want to know as soon as the video drop. And if not, oh well. But yeah, let's get into it. See who uh, running from the Jakes, from the 12, from the cops. Making it out of the trenches and into the rap game is the dream for a lot of people. But most dudes who make it still have one foot in the streets and get caught up. Today, we're breaking down the most famous rappers who didn't leave the streets behind and ended up running from the cops. Spot'em Got'em is a rapper from Jacksonville, Florida who blew up back in 2020 with the track Beatbox. He got booked last year on weapon charges after allegedly pointing a pistol at a parking attendant. And when the cops found him in his hotel room, he had a Draco tucked in bed with him. Spot'em pleaded not guilty to the charges, but now he's facing a new case after trying to run from the cops on a jet ski. On June 26, Spot'em was riding a jet ski around the... <laughs> On a jet ski, though? My boy tried to get away from the, the, the boat police. <laughs> he not playing no games. On Miami Marine Stadium, when the cops saw him doing S-type turns near anchored boats and speeding through a restricted area, the police turned on their boat siren and lights to get his attention. But Spottom went full Grand Theft Auto and smashed off. According to cops, Spottom began to swerve through boats in close proximity to swimmers. Eventually, the police caught him, and luckily, no one got hurt. Jet skis are a lot more dangerous than people think, and Spottom could have easily killed someone in the water if he ran him over. He got hit with reckless operation of a boat and fleeing the police, but it's not. I'm pretty sure I seen that right there on Instagram, him on the jet skis and all that, because uh, he lost his chain, too. If anybody else seen that on his Instagram, he lost his, um, I don't know what the piece was, but he lost it uh, while he was jet skiing. Not clear if the case will end up going to trial. He's already facing some serious charges though, and since he's a felon, it might be tough to get a good plea deal. Chef G helped put Brooklyn Drill on the map in 2017 when he dropped No Suburban. Chef became a successful rapper damn near overnight, but he'd been having issues with the cops basically his whole life. Coming up in Brooklyn was tough, and Chef said, Growing up, all I was around was violence in school or hanging with my n It was rough in the streets. I had to be protected out there, so I rolled with the A trays. He caught his first charge when he was 15, and Chef's been in and out of jail ever since. Even after he blew up with no suburban, Chef was so active in the streets. He got stabbed in the head after one of his ops caught him lacking from behind, and then Chef says he went back to jail. Stabbed in the head? <clears throat> they was trying to take that boy out. I ain't gonna lie, they was trying to, they was trying to end it all for him real quick. Stabbed him in the head. That's one thing. It's one thing to get shot. But when you get stabbed and a nigga. <clears throat> I think. What y'all think? Drop in the comments how y'all. What y'all think worse? Getting stabbed or getting shot? I think getting stabbed. But let's keep going though. Jail from October 2017 to January 2018. In 2019, he came back to the rap game with the mixtape, The Unlucky Lucky Kid. The tape earned him even more momentum in the industry, but Chef still ain't switch up how he moved. On August 21st, 2020, he got into a high-speed chase in Long Island. It's not clear why the cops were after him, but Chef blew through an intersection and swiped an SUV with his Mercedes. Chef slid another 200 feet down the road before his car smashed into a tree. Luckily, he made it out with no serious injuries but the woman he hit wasn't as fortunate. She sued Chef G and said the crash injured her neck, back, and shoulder, and now she's trying to get a bag off him. That's big cap. Wasn't nothing wrong with her. We all know wasn't nothing wrong with her. What, what, we say every what do we say every time somebody hit us? I'm finna fall out. I'm finna fall out. And I'm thinking, man, it wasn't nothing wrong with that woman. Did you see how? Did you see how he hit the car? Ain't no way her neck and back and man, come on now. Getting hit with a lawsuit is tough, but Chef has worse problems to deal with right now. 
Last year, he pleaded guilty to second degree gun possession after getting pulled over in the same Mercedes and getting caught with a 4-5 cal Glock. He's currently serving a two year sentence for the charge, but maybe this time when he gets out, he'll focus on his career and leave the streets for good. Young boy never broke again, just beat his case after dealing with legal issues for the. I just had to do that, my bad, my bad. Let me get back to it. The past couple years, and now his homie D Dog is facing his own sentence. On September 21st, D Dog got into a police chase just a few days after getting out on bond for an attempted murder charge. Nobody knows why D Dog was running in the first place, but he ended up crashing, which killed his homie in the passenger seat. D Dog got hit with manslaughter and resisting an officer. But I did a video on this, um, probably like last week or something like that. If you ain't seen it yet, go check that out. He's still in the hospital recovering from the crash. He might get more charges added later because the cops also found a ski mask and weapons inside his whip. This ain't the first serious case that D Dog has been involved in. Back in 2012, he was arrested for allegedly murdering a dude named Derek Mariano. According to local reporters, D Dog and two other dudes robbed Derek, and at some point, shots started going off. Derek was tragically killed, and his wife and daughter barely made it out of the situation alive. D Dog is also facing an attempted murder charge from 2018 where he allegedly shot at somebody else. The chief of police told reporters, We've dealt with him before, the same individuals. That is what I hear from my officers. We arrest them and have to deal with them again. Shooting incidents, murders, what's right about that? His homie Youngboy might have just beat his case, but it don't look like D Dog is going to be as lucky. With a manslaughter charge on top of the attempted murder, D Dog could end up behind bars for decades if he gets convicted. Plus, his bond is set at 19.4 mil, so it ain't looking too good for him. Lil Tim shocked the world. <coughs> The D-Dog dude actually got like uh, a couple mental illness problems. If you just go check that the video out that I did on him, and you'll see what you'll see what I'm talking about. They should have got him help. I said it in that video. I'm gonna say it in this video. They should have got uh, NBA D-Dog. They should have got him help. When he allegedly killed King Von back in 2020. That night, Von and his crew allegedly attacked Quando Rondo, so Lil Tim pulled his burner out and started busting shots. Lil Tim also got hit during all the chaos, but he drove himself to the hospital after it went down. While he was in the hospital, Tim got hit with a murder charge for King Von's death, and in March 2021, they let him out on a $100,000 bond. But instead of keeping his head down and waiting for his trial to start, Lil Tim was arrested again after he got into a high-speed chase in Georgia. There aren't a lot of details about what went down, but in September 2021, DJ Academics posted Lil Tim's mugshot on Twitter after the chase. According to the records from the sheriff's office, Tim was booked on failure to stop at a stop sign, speeding, following another car too closely, failure to obey traffic control devices, and fleeing or attempting to elude a police officer for a felony offense. A lot of people thought he'd be in jail for a minute this time, but Lil Tim posted bail again and is back out on the streets. He was already facing a murder charge for the Vaughn situation. But now we got another felony to deal with too. Hopefully, he's got a legal team, because otherwise, he could end up sitting down for a long time. Fulio was a rapper from Jacksonville who blew up because of his wild beef with Young and Ace. Both of them was already buzzing, but when their crews turned Jacksonville into a war zone, it made their music pop off even more. Now, Fulio's facing a felony charge for fleeing the police after a traffic stop back in April. On April 5th, Jacksonville Sheriff's officers pulled Fulio over in his Dodge Durango. They testified that they originally stopped him for his window tint, and then he drove under the speed limit for less than 400 feet before he stopped. Body cam footage shows that Fulio stopped less than 20 seconds after the cops tried to pull him over. When he parked. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I seen this. They were doing uh, Fulio. I ain't gonna cap. They were doing him bad out there, slanging him all around, grabbing him by the hair and everything. I don't know if they're gonna show it in here. But in the uh, in the arrest video, like the the body cam that the police wear, man, they was doing that man bad, bad. You know how the police do when they want when they want man. He should have just pulled over at first. I don't know what he was doing, but he should have just pulled over at first. Parked the Durango. Five detectives ran up on him with their guns out and cuffed him. The cops ain't find anything illegal in the whip, but a detective testified that they actually stopped Fulio because they wanted to confiscate cell phones to help him with a different case. They held Fulio in a squad car for over two hours. 
then they took him to the state attorney's office to question him about a murder case he never even got arrested for five hours after they stopped him the cops finally told fulio he was under arrest for evading the police and took him to jail the whole situation was sketchy an assistant state attorney showed up at the scene and basically told the cops what to do and it's obvious that fulio was only arrested because of other crimes they think he's involved in fulio's lawyer filed a motion to have the case thrown out and the judge said he would consider it the videos make it clear that fulio didn't actually try to run but the cops had to charge him with something since they held him for five hours with no probable cause the case is still on look how they doing them though they gotta charge him with something well we'll do that you ain't a man that's why people don't that's why the name of this video is rappers that ran from the police this is why they running bruh because when y'all get them, y'all going to do them like that. I'll run too. Weak ass. I'm going. But chances are, the judge will just dismiss the whole thing. Jim Jones popped off back in the 2000s and was in a crew with Cameron called Dipset. But like a lot of dudes from that era, he couldn't keep up with the game and ended up falling off pretty hard. Then in 2018, Jones and his homies got into a chase with the cops in Georgia. According to the police report, the Mercedes SUV Jones was in was drifting all over the interstate. When the cops tried to pull him over, the driver of the SUV floored it and tried to escape. The police wasn't playing though. They swerved in front of the Mercedes and let it hit them to stop the chase. When they walked up to the whip, they said it was full of smoke and smelled like weed. The driver was a woman named Anna Rajni Miles, and Jones said he tried to get her to pull over, but she was acting incoherent. When the cops searched the SUV, they found a backpack with oxycodone pills and two guns, and another backpack with oxycodone, Percocet, THC oil, and cash. That boy was the plug, wasn't he? He just named off like six different drugs. Y'all just... Run. Jones told the cops he smoked weed, but that the weed in the car wasn't his. They booked him on receiving stolen property, possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime, and drug charges. Originally, he got hit with five felonies and was facing decades in prison, but Jones got a great plea deal and avoided jail time completely. All he had to do was pay a $1,500 fine and spend two years on probation. Hopefully, he don't get in any more trouble, because he'll probably never get that lucky in the court system again. Lil Uzi Burke came up in Philly, where it's normal to see dudes riding down the streets on dirt bikes and ATV. It do not matter. I do not matter. You got me daddy. Beats. But in 2016, <laughs> Uzi got in trouble with the cops in Atlanta after trying to outrun them on a dirt bike. According to the police report, Uzi and his homies were riding through Atlanta on dirt bikes without lights or helmets. They was riding on sidewalks, going the wrong way on one-way streets, and allegedly crossed five lanes of traffic without signaling. And when cops tried to pull him over, Uzi and his homies took off. But Uzi went too fast, lost control, and wiped out. They tried to run away. Ooh, I know he was skidding all down the road, and I know it hurt, but I'm sure he didn't fail before. If they out there running from the Jakes and running from 12 on them joints, I'm sure he didn't fail before. But let's get back into it. Went on foot, but the cops caught up and booked him on obstruction, reckless driving, and a few other charges. After they posted bail, Uzi proved they wasn't taking it too seriously when he hopped on IG and posted a video popping a willy on a dirt bike. Most of the charges ended up getting dropped, but Uzi did plead guilty for failure to maintain lane and got hit with 80 hours of community service plus a $1,000 fine. The situation worked out at the end of the day, but hopefully Uzi at least puts on a helmet if he ever has to run away again. 300 for that in two. And that right there is the end of the video. Um, let me see which one I think was the worst. Probably the D Dog one. That's probably was the worst one on there. The D Dog gent. Yeah, that's probably the worst one to me. Y'all, uh, drop in the comments which one y'all think was the worst was the worst one. I think it was the D Dog. But before y'all do that, I want y'all to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And um, we gone until the next time we out. I'll let y'all.